that he did as the equipment major domo. I don't know if the transition from the old campus athletic situation to what now is the O'Neill Center and the WAC and all the marvelous things that Western athletes have nowadays. I don't know if it would have gone as smoothly without this individual contributing. And contributing in more ways than just dealing with equipment and changing numbers on this guy, that guy, and the headaches. No. He took it all, took everything in stride, and took the time out for each and every athlete at the university that he came across. Ladies and gentlemen, our next inductee, Ray Harris. Thank you, Mr. Peter, tonight. My age, uh, all you do is look back. The head may not be much further, you know. But anyway, we look back at a lot of things. And I want to thank the committee for writing this honor to me, something I absolutely never expected, especially as an equipment manager, which, uh, according to a chain of command, is the bottom one of the ladder. <laughs> and you know what happens to the bottom one of the ladder when something goes wrong. But also, you have to remember, that bottom rung is what holds the ladder in place while the top guys are up on the top. <laughs> so what you do is you take all the, all the equipment problems away from these people and you do it with the kids, you keep them fit and proper, doing what has to be done. And I just still remember my first year here, uh, I said to a player, go into the shower and wet your head, then come back and fit your helmet. And he looked at me like I was crazy, it was a freshman. Just out of high school. I said, just do what I tell you. So after a little argument, he went out and he did it, he came back, and we fit him with a helmet. And it fit him pretty good. Well, the next day he came up and he said, Coach, this is too tight. I can't stand it. I said, Well, yes, you can. I said, Once you start sweating, that helmet's going to be loose. <laughs> and if it loosens in a game or a scrimmage and comes off, you're going to be very sorry that you made it bigger than it is. And the rest of the guys heard me say that. I never had an argument again with anyone about their homes. <laughs> Some of the other stuff they didn't like, but the hell they never argued about. <laughs> well, you know, uh, when I first came here, uh, I was told that I might not like the first developer here because uh, I taught at a town called Buchanan, Connecticut, or not I would say Buchanan, Connecticut. And uh, it's a different type of kid down there. But they're still kids, teenagers. These kids are a little bit older, four years old. That's all. They're still in the process of growing up. They're still in the process of learning. And they want to learn. And you know what? They need people to guide them. They need their coaches. And they need me to. If I didn't get after them, they wouldn't turn the clothes and get it washed. Well, they, they, they got it washed. They didn't take it home and wash it. They brought it in and got it washed. Because they realized that we would take care of it. And it would be done properly. It'd be ready for it on time. And that's what the kids that worked for me did, and that's what I did. That's what our whole deal was about. So he said, well, how did you get here? Well, all I can say is, when I retired from New Canaan, I reached a Yogi Bear fork in a row. So guess what I did? I took the fork. <laughs> the fork came right up here. And here I came for a good 10 years with Ed Farrington and the rest of the coaches and all those kids that came through us in all those years, enjoying every minute of them, even the bad ones. But I do have a couple of personals here. One, Kate Manning, you owe me two t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Wayne, I never got back that fall winter jacket. <laughs> but then that's, well, Statue of limitations is over, so I guess you can keep it all. <laughs> well, anyway, a mentor of mine once said, to be appreciated, shut up. So that's what I'm going to say. Thank you very much.